quiet, my friend. Your time will come. We have captured two of the little ponies, Master. Have you forgotten something, Scorpion? Yes, that is better. A lot of people have been asking what I thought of season four finale, being one of the few people to sit down and give the entire G1 cartoon a thorough and honest review. Therefore, I've gone through Rescue of Midnight Castle and thus have covered the original T-Rex. Well, before I get into Tarek, I want to talk about Discord. A lot of people are trying to say that Discord had a plan in this episode. They say he was playing Tarek in order to get Twilight and company to open the box. Well, I'm here to say that there was no plan. Discord is on the side of Discord. Every major action he takes and alliance he forms is to benefit him. Discord will side with whoever he thinks will get him what he wants. That's why you wanted to help Twilight open the box. At the time, he figured helping them with the mystery would put him more in their good graces. However, when Tyrek offered him his freedom, he figured that that was a better deal than what he was getting from the ponies and went along with it. Why would he hold back the information on Twilight being a princess? Well, because Discord isn't stupid. You keep calling him Flutteron, the first thing he did was try to use Fluttershy to weasel out of having to be Celestia's errand boy while keeping his freedom. And he figured Tyrek might do the same. Twilight was his ace in the hole in case Tarek betrayed him and only told him of her existence when he believed that he could trust him. Discord unfortunately underestimated how patient devious Tarek was. But the reason we're here is Tarek and how he compares to the old Tarek. While Tarek is the best villain Friendship is Magic has put out in terms of pure entertainment value, he still doesn't measure up to the original. Tarek actually reminds me more of Erebus than Tarek. While well, Tyrek and Erebus are actually fairly weak but can drain others' power to buff themselves. Both leave their victims essentially helpless. Both use manipulation to convince others to do their dirty work only to betray them when they're no longer in use. Really, Tyrek is Erebus and Tyrek's body. This kind of irritates me in the same way Khan and Star Trek in the Darkness kind of irritated me. While well, New Tyrek and Khan worked as antagonists in and of themselves, them being Tyrak and Khan smacks of name dropping because the name is all they have from the original characters. Tyrak irritates me a little more because he is Erebus in every way but name and design, and the only reason they use Tyrak instead of Erebus is because Twilight Kick and Erebus' ass wouldn't have had the same impact as Twilight Kick and Tyrak's ass. However, this is only a mild irritation I don't hold against the episode or Tyrak. Turk in and of himself worked as a villain for this episode, which is all that matters for this particular episode. However, this does make me a little wary of the writers because they used an iconic villain but didn't bring anything that made him iconic to the table or try to make him iconic in his own right. They figured that all they needed was the name and the design with certain quote unquote improvements I'll get to later. I believe Ravage can give us a good analog for my issues with Turek. I served under the original Megatron. You have his name, but not his army. While it's lacking Tyrek's army of abominations, Tyrek lacks many of the qualities that made Tyrek so memorable, or really anything to make him stand out in his own right. Even Beast Wars Megatron, who Ravage is referring to, had established himself as a magnificent bastard, even if he wasn't like the original Megatron. In the case of Tyrek, it seems like they just want to make him big and bad so Twilight could have an epic fight with him. And nothing tells me Tyrek was just meant to be big and bad more than casting Mark Aikson for the voice. If you look at Aikson's resume, there's a lot of big guy roles in there. In terms of the jobs he's done for Hasbro, he was the English voice of Unicron in Armada and Energon, when Unicron did a little more than Snarl and Crumples on Cybertron. And he was a big guy here, too, with a little subtlety or refinement to his performance. I'm not bagging on Aixen as an actor. For the roles he does play, he does great work, and I have to admit this weak Tarek voice was creepy. But I think Tarek was not the type of character he's best suited for. He just lacks that quality you want in him. Victor Caroli's performance as Tarek was bone-chilling. He played Tarek as subdued most of the time, only going off the rails when needed. He didn't raise his voice in anger much, and rather delivered the angry lines through clenched teeth. And when he did raise his voice, well, just watch. I'd be really and truly proud of you! Silence! 
you will prepare another raid, Scorpion. Silence! That's better. Guards, remove the small one. He went back to his calm demeanor and picked up where he left off. It's that kind of spontaneous behavior that made Tarek the subject of nightmares and the current Tarek lacks as he just growled his way through the episode. Now, I'm not saying that they should have tried to ape Crowley's performance, however they should have cast someone who could bring a similar low-key menace to the character. Clancy Brown immediately comes to mind. His performance as Lex Luthor and Silas convinced me that he would have been perfect for Tarek. Jeffrey Combs is another option who might have been more effective as he has played characters with massive swings of mood. Stephen Blum and Tony Todd have also shown their ability to make simple talking threatening. And all these people have worked with Hasbro Studios. And going out even further, is David Kay still in the business? Another thing the original Tarak had that the modern Tarak lacks is atmosphere. The ironic thing about the new Tyrk is that he's more terrifying when he's weak than as he gains power because of the atmosphere. He's slinking through the shadows and ambushing his victims. His first two scenes were incredible and showed such promise. He was like a monster out of a horror flick and his silver tongue swaying discord to his side gave you a sense of dread. However, once he drops his cloak and starts stomping around in broad daylight, the mystique and sense of dread are gone. He's just another rather generic villain doing bad things for our amusement. He's really good at it, but there's nothing all that special to it. Rescue Midnight Castle, on the other hand, had a very rich atmosphere surrounding Tarek, especially since we didn't get a good look at him until almost halfway through the special. Midnight Castle was dark and foreboding both inside and out. His troops were nightmarish and imposing compared to the ponies. Even the music that accompanied his scenes was haunting and matched the subdued nature only to fly immediately into the bombastic when he took action. He had the full package going for the whole episode, which made him so terrifying and memorable. And on the note of the theme, Turek's theme in Friendship is Magic While Menacing doesn't have that haunting quality as it seemed to go too fast and was too loud for what he was doing. Regarding both Tyrick and the Rainbow Power form, someone needs to tell DHX more is not always better. Tyrick's final design is ridiculous and too much everywhere. He looks like the picture of a comically over-muscled man from the Power Thirst videos. His deltoids are bigger than his head for crying out loud. The horns are also way too long as they almost double his height. The fact fans have made better G4 style designs of t rex than the official design should be ashamed of the people at DHX. You can do better than this. The original t rex was large and muscular, but to a realistic degree. This looks imposing. This looks ridiculous. t rex ridiculous bulk might have even hindered the fight scene. If he had been closer to party size, they could have been more dynamic with how he fought. The Unshaved Mouse, a WordPress reviewer reviews the Disney canon, talked about how top tier villains will have a moment when they do something typically small to prove just how evil they are. If you want to see his examples from the Disney canon, check out his blog because it's a really fun read. Anyway, the original Tarek had one of those moments. Well. But you three will do for now. Behold the power of darkness! belong to me now. And Scorpion, if by midnight I do not have a fourth pony, a head will roll his. While Turk turning the ponies into abominations is the first thing many people think of, his ultimatum to Scorpion proves just how cruel he is. It's also not just the fact that he throws his head spike, but the way he does it. It's not a big proclamation or play for dramatic effect. It's delivered with mild anger in a by-the-way manner. It takes a special kind of evil to be that nonchalant with the life of a baby. The modern Tyrk has no moment like this. You might want to say his betrayal of discord, but we saw it coming. Most of Tyrk's actions were formulaic and didn't give us much insight into the depth of his cruelty. Again, he was just a big bad dude for Twilight to fight.
I understand that there are some things that because of modern norms in this show being rated TV-wide, they just couldn't do. Obviously, Tarek is not going to hold up Spike and threaten to cut his head off if Twilight didn't surrender her magic. However, they could have done something other than just being generally bad. The magic sucking was creepy, but it's been done. Erebus even did it better with him being gleeful about his parasitic way of life as well as seeing just how broken his victims were in mind and spirit as well as body. Tarek's victims just lied there physically drained but otherwise none the worse for wear, and Tarek himself was just flat in terms of personality. I think more thought should have been put into Tarek as a character. We get the backstory of him and his brother Scorpan, but the only impact that has is he hates his brother for betraying him. There's no look into what Tarek wants to do with Equestria despite him having the perfect listener in Discord. Even after he has the Alicorn magic, he just stomps around blasting out energy beams like your typical kaiju. At least the original Tarek had us knowing that he wanted to bring about Eternal Night, and through his actions and surroundings determined that men corrupt in a world into his own twisted image. Modern Tarek just seems to want to destroy stuff, which is a letdown in comparison. The thing is, I enjoyed this episode much like I enjoy a Rice Krispie Treat. Did the big fight make up for the fact that Tarek was a pale imitation of Tarek? Yes. However, I don't want to see other G1 villains receive a similar treatment. Either put in the effort to make them something other than a generic threat that needs to be beaten up or leave them be. And those are my thoughts on Tarek compared to T-Rek. While a badass, the new Tarek doesn't come close to the king of the badasses. The original Tarek continues to rule supreme as the best My Little Pony villain ever.